Hello, this is Jeff Wilkerson, Professor of Physics at Luther College. Uh, what we're doing today uh, is we're going to do a little calculation. And this is a calculation that's designed primarily for the students in Engineering Science and Physics 150 this semester, following, on, following some questions we had in class today um, as we're doing some review work. Uh, so, so what we're going to do, what the point of this, if there is a, a single point, there's, there's, there are multiple things here probably, but the idea of what we're trying to do here is we're going to practice doing some quick scaling relationships to see how one number compares to another number. And then we're also uh, thinking about density a little bit as we've been thinking about the different densities of different kinds of objects and, and practicing with density a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to work with main sequence stars here because that's more fun for me than some other things. And we're going to ask the question, how does the density of stars in the upper main sequence compare to the density of stars in the lower main sequence? So let's, um, the lower main sequence down here and the upper main sequence up here someplace. But let's start with the main sequence. And to do that, let's start with an HR diagram uh, that astrophysicists use, astronomers use all the time to say luminosity, it's a graph of luminosity versus temperature. Uh, luminosity increases up this way, temperature increases across this way. And so when you do that, you find out most of the stars fall in this band right here that we call the main sequence. You do a little bit more work, a little bit more detective work there, and you figure out that the stars that fall in this main sequence are fusing hydrogen to helium in their cores as their primary power source. And so when you're undergoing core hydrogen fusion as your primary power source, you are a main sequence star. So, okay, well now we're set up. We can say, let's, let's just do two star comparison. We're going to use Tau Ceti as the example star for the lower main sequence. And we're going to use Vega as our example star from something near the upper main sequence. There are, there are stars further down the main sequence and stars further up the main sequence than these two stars. But these are two pretty good stars for us to be working with. And we're going to write, we're going to assume these stars are spheres to do our calculation of density. And because we're asking the question, so let's actually, let's go back to the spheres. We're going to assume these stars are spheres, and it doesn't really matter that much. If these stars are out of round a little bit, uh, and not spheres, but sort more or less the same sort of general shape, that doesn't make any difference at all for us, probably. I, I have my doubts uh, whether this very big star versus this much smaller star uh, really would be out of round in the same kind of way. And it depends a lot on how fast the star is spinning and so on. But this is all a sort of what we would call a second order effect. It's not going to give us, we're going to get the primary sense of how the density of these two stars differs. Now, if we wanted to continue this and we wanted to do it in a statistical kind of way rather than a uh, calculational differential equations kind of way, uh, we would pick five or six or seven or eight more stars and just keep doing these kinds of comparisons up here to down here to see if uh, so we don't trust this one example too much. We wouldn't trust this one example too much if we hadn't done that other work, and we do know that this is going to this is going to hold up for us. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to treat these things as spheres, and we're going to say the volume of the sphere is four thirds pi r cubed. Let's write that over here. The volume of the sphere is four thirds pi times the radius of the star cubed, and the density of the star then is going to be mass over volume. We're going to stick that in for the volume. Good, good. So now we're going to say the density of Vega divided by the density of Tau Ceti is equal to the mass of Vega divided by 4 thirds pi r of Vega cubed all over the mass of tau ceti divided by 4 thirds pi r of tau ceti cubed. Okay? Now, what we're going to do, we're just going to get rid of the 4 thirds pi, right? The 4 thirds pi goes away top and bottom, and that's why we do these kinds of scaling things. If we wanted to know the actual densities, we'd have to plug numbers in, but we're not going to plug those numbers in and, and figure out what the actual density is. We just want to say, is vega more dense? less dense or about the same density uh, as Tau Ceti. And so we'll look at that and we'll break this apart. So what we have left now is the mass of Vega divided by the radius of Vega cubed over the mass of Tau Ceti divided by the radius of Tau Ceti cubed. 
And I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by the radius of tau seti cubed. So it'll cancel out on the bottom and it'll pop up here. And so we can write this as the mass of vega divided by the mass of tau seti times the radius of tau seti cubed. Let's just cube the whole thing. Divided by the radius of vega all cubed. And I've written down here, I looked these up, I didn't know these, I looked these up on what the masses and the radius of these stars are in solar units compared to the sun. So we've already done a scaling relationship to get these out of here. But this is equal to then uh, 2.1 solar masses divided by uh, 0.79 solar masses times the solar masses cancel out. We're just going to get a ratio here. Uh, we're not going to have any units left over on the end, uh, times uh, 0.79 solar radii divided by 2.3 solar radii cubed. Now you see that this is going to affect this, this calculation a lot more than this is because of that cube that goes in there. Uh, but this looks like, let's just plug some numbers in and see uh, what happens here. Uh, so this 2.1 divided by 0.79 is going to give us 2.66. Let's say I keep one extra digit in there. So we got 2.66, and that's the that first ratio. Let's calculate 0.79 divided by 2.3, but we have to cube this result because these are cubed right here. Uh, and so... We cube this result, and we get uh, 0 .00, uh, 0 0.0405, okay? And we take that times 2.66, and we get the answer out in here that is 0.11. So... If we've done this correctly, if we've, if we've worked our way through this, this scaling relationship where we were able to cancel out constants and just do these ratios and calculate the ratios as we needed to, tells us that vega in the upper main sequence is only about 11% as dense as tau seti in the lower main sequence. So upper main sequence, if this holds, and it does, when we look at other kinds of stars, we get the idea that upper main sequence of stars are significantly less dense than lower main sequence stars. So they have, they have more mass, but the radius, so basically we think of that, they have more mass. The mass is growing as you move up the upper main sequence, but the radius is growing as well. And that means the volume is growing very quickly since we cube that radius that way. So that's what we got. That's our calculation to see, help us think about how we do these sorts of scalings to get a sense of how this, this stuff works. Uh, so uh, that's it. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks for watching.